Hey, I was wrong. <laughs> I, well, or, I should, or correctly, I should say, I wasn't wrong. I thought I missed this stuff because I hadn't put the uh, the screw in yet, and then I remembered the order of disassembly and going in reverse. I actually want to put the saddle on first, then the nut assembly goes up from underneath and gets screwed on, and then the screw is threaded into it. So I'm actually I'm on track. All right. So what I was about to do before I panicked was I was about to put some oil on ways here. All right. Now I got the jib all cleaned up. I know exactly how the jib goes in. It goes in the same way the other one did where this rides in, uh, there's a spacer that rides in here. And I've got to make sure that that's in correctly. And the problem is, of course, it wants to fall out, but I should be able to hold the saddle from underneath and actually hold on to this jib at the back with my fingertips so that I can get this started. And then, of course, once I get it slid on there, it won't have any place to go. So, in theory, it should work. Get this lowered down, make my life a little easier. Maybe that's what the noise was. I thought maybe it was the jib lock. Then why isn't that lock working? Enough. So I set up a board across the uh, legs of the uh, crane and stacked a couple boards on top of it and this nice big block on it. My plan is, or was, to actually put the saddle on that and then uh, what I did to uh, prepare myself was I lowered the knee all the way down and uh, <laughs> I wasn't cranking it very hard but um, what happened was it basically just all of a sudden stopped and so then I went the other way and lo and behold it wasn't working so I took a look down in here and I could see the shaft is spinning in the pinion it looks like I actually broke the key so uh, the shear strength on that key wasn't very strong apparently but uh, either that or I, I don't know don't know my own strength but it didn't seem like I was doing it that hard, so now I get to take that apart again. Alright, I unscrewed this whole assembly, so it should come out, but it's kind of sticking. Which, uh, if the, uh, if the key sheared and it's not lined up perfectly right, it might be causing the shaft to bind. should be a spot where it's looser. Just found it. Maybe not. Get it out part way and stop. I said it could be wedged in there pretty good. Pulling on it as I was turning it. Well, I see the slot. I don't see a key. Oh, you know what? Woodruff key and it fell out, fell out when I was putting this in and I didn't even notice it. And the only thing that was making this work was friction fit. How do you like them apples? Well, I like it a lot because it means I don't have to stop for want of a uh, Woodruff key this evening. I can see it sitting right there. Did I just lose it? That's the trick. Uh, I should have grabbed the magnet. I think now it may have fallen down into an area where I can't reach it. Oh, I see it. Uh, get a magnet. Magnetic tip screwdriver. Gotta love it. Long handled one too. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again.
Alright, so I can see where the, uh... There's more to play. Let's see where the slot is, it's on the bottom. I'm gonna put my finger on the woodruff key, make sure it doesn't fall off again until I, uh, get it there. Far enough that I can rotate this now, I think, so that it's at least on top. Oh, it's all the way down, so I gotta come up a little bit to get there. There we go. Okay. I probably need my dead blow mallet to do this. Let me try this, this cheapy hammer. Where I got this cream puff of a hammer will be coming up uh, in a future video. Oh no, wait a minute. By the time this airs, the QVEA show video and flea market sale will have aired. So, you should already know where I got this if you watch my videos. Okay, a little stubborn. Come on. Yeah, of course, now the screws don't line up. Alright, I think I can cheat here. All it takes is one to get started. Well, I've got a problem. The other night, I uh, reinstalled this shaft. I know that the uh, Woodruff key stayed put. So that's good. Problem is, you can see there's a little bit of a space there. This shaft, I think, needs to go in a little further, but I can't push it in any further the way it is. But more than likely what's happening is this pinion gear was being pushed that way as I was driving the uh, shaft in. Okay, so the problem this is causing for me right now is with this pinion gear being pushed out too far, it's meshing too tightly with the uh, teeth on the uh, other bevel gear. So it doesn't feel good at all and the problem with that is that will cause excessive premature wear of those teeth so I've got to back that out and I can't back it out too far because if I back it out too far that'll create excessive backlash in the uh, knee adjustment. I've got a couple ideas how I'll be able to move that over but before I do anything else I'm just going to try and see if I can tap it over it's kind of a bad angle to really get a hammer on, but maybe I won't need to move it much. Let's see if that did anything. Nope. Alright, plan B. Alright, ain't the prettiest solution. Well, I got, had this piece of scrap aluminum, weird shaped piece, and I just happened to find out that it kind of wedged in here nice, up against the webbing on the inside here and at the back. And that left a space of a very particular size that I was able to uh, wedge this piece of scrap gear into. All right, pardon the interruption. Anywho, now that I got something wedged in there, I've got this gear moved back more to uh, where, it, roughly the position where it should be. Now, in theory, I'm hoping I can uh, tap this uh, shaft on the end here of the handle and since that gear can't move that way hopefully the shaft will go further into the pinion gear where I want it. That's a dead blow mallet by the way in case you're wondering what I'm banging on that thing with and I can't really see if it's moving any it doesn't look like it did so I'm going to try and tighten the uh, tighten the cap screws down and see whether or not I've got it in far enough that it will uh, tighten down all the way. All right, that looks good and flush. 
So now, we pop this gear out. Uh, before I go any further, I dropped that aluminum gear and it fell down behind the uh, partition there. Hopefully I can get that out. That's not a really good place to drop something. It's far enough down that I can't reach it through here. I can't get to it from the bottom either. Hmm. You know what? I think that aluminum gear is going to probably spend the rest of its life trapped inside this mill. Of course, it would have to be aluminum, so I can't get it with a magnet. There's a, a small opening behind here, but when I reach through that opening, I can't feel the gear. So the gear must have fallen down low enough that I can't reach it through this opening. Well, I should go buy a lottery ticket. I didn't start, I didn't turn the camera on because I figured I'd just have five minutes of me fishing around with this thing aimlessly. But, boy, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I hooked that like on the first try. I was able to fish it out. All right. That's the good news. All right, now I'm going to get a tape measure because I want to... I got some more wood blocking when I was outside today and brought it down here so I can kind of build up some cribbing like I talked about maybe trying to do initially. It can make life a lot easier here. So, table all the way down, I gotta get up to uh, about 26 inches. So, got a ways to go there. But I should be able to get close. Even if I get close, it'll help. So, uh, that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, let's see, I want to put my plates back on. Daddy, Don't care! Must be about 5 o'clock. The phone just starts ringing with telemarketers pretty much for the next hour. Alright, so now I'm going to try and lower the thing into position on top of that block without whacking my head on that boom. I've decided it's going to be easy to clean this once it's up on top of the sat, uh, on top of the knee, so I'm not worried about how dirty this is. The ways on the top here have flash rust on them too. Okay. Now we just have to very gingerly wheel this thing into position. We got the jib. Let's try this again. That's the way that goes. Back's gonna be hurting tonight. Uh oh. I just raised this all the way up to uh, clean the saddle and realized that I uh, I forgot the little plunger that sat in here, sits behind the jib on this end, and uh, is the lock for the saddle. So, what I'm wondering is if I take this handle off. And screw this. I wonder if I could just slide that little plunger in from this side. Yeah. I got a feeling it's not going to clear the threads. Well, no way to find out. Let me go find it. All right, I found them, and there are two. There is one for the saddle, and there is one for the uh, for the table. And they're virtually identical, 
except one is much shorter. And actually, well, yeah, eyeballing it, they do look like they're the same diameter also, so I've got to figure out which one of these goes where. Now, let's see, if I put this long one in here, that handle there is going to not be threaded in far at all before it's hitting. So that's a vote for this not being the one for the saddle. Whereas if I put this one in, there, that looks about right. And just to double check, the other one needs to go here in the table. If I put this one in the table, it's going to reach about here. Yeah, this is definitely the table, and this is the saddle one. Now, for the million dollar question, will it go in the back way? I think it will. But I'm going to make sure the slant is facing the right way, like that. And I also want it to stay that way going in. So if I push it on like this, What I want to do is I want to push that straight in without it turning. I think I got it. So let's uh, pretend that the... Smart. All right. So let's see, that would be the uh, unlocked. That's unlocked. That's locked. Alright, it works. Good. But, I'm going to take this back out because it's going to be really easy for me to clean this area right in here with this out. First, I'm going to pick up that other little part before I forget about it. I had slid this out for a reason. Slid this out so that this stuff won't want to run down onto my nice clean knee assembly that I already washed. Now you can see why I didn't want to screw that thing in right away. Before, after. Before, after. Well, that came out really well. And that's only about 15 minutes worth of uh, scrubbing with just a uh, cloth and the uh, rag. The uh, ways on the top get a little more work. I just uh, so far, I just got the easiest stuff off with the uh, with the cleaner. The back one is in really good shape. Just down the end here, front one, it's got quite a bit more rust that I'm going to have to work on. So that'll go, uh, I'll use a uh, 3M scouring pad there, one of those scotch Bright type pads, and probably use some of that penetrating lubricant that works so well on the other ways. But right now I'm going to go upstairs and give my 12-year-old uh, a game of chess, which I'm pretty sure he's going to beat me.